Okay, so with the roof done, um, in the last episode, uh, I have now primed both the extension and the main roof. Now, the main roof, because it was removable, it was simple to use the Halfords Grey Primer out in the garage and cover it entirely, um, including the, the barge board sides. With the uh, extension, it's a little bit more fiddly, but what you can do is taking that same Halfords primer, spray some of it into the cap of it, and then you've got a little reservoir of paint that you can just apply it with a paintbrush, just to you know work it in around the the coins, um, because it's at the minute it's the same colour as the the uh, surrounding walls. It doesn't matter if you run over that, but it's just more. Um, to watch yourself you know at the coins in actual fact I've sort of I think I've touched it a little bit there so I have but we can fix that with a, an additional bit of painting of the coins at a later date so the next stage is uh, in terms of the roof we want to darken that down and with that we're going to use uh, Revels Matte 78 now you can use any colours that you want from any of the ranges whether it be the Humbrel, Revel, or even the likes of Vallejo and that. Um, but you want a nice dark colour that's going to be our base coat for the uh, the tiles. Um, once this is applied, we will then add uh, some washes and uh, dry brushing to it to, to finish it off. And just make sure, again, with regards to the painting, same as the brickwork, that you get into all those little grooves uh, between the tiles. So I'll crack on with that and then we'll come back to this aspect of it whenever it's ready for a little touch of weathering. So I'm just finishing off the last bit of painting on this and just before I did finish I wanted to just show you actually what I was doing. As I said this is um, it's the enamel mat 78 and it's a very thin uh, application of paint that I'm putting on. Um, it may look quite thick there at the minute. But once you go across it uh, vertically like that, I'm then taking the brush and sweeping downwards. Just to get in through all the little the joins but it's also if you can see hopefully without the glare let me turn it this other side where the paint's dried off a little bit more and hopefully you can catch that the paint has um, if you were doing this and wanting a, a, a pin perfect painting you would be looking to put a second coat on this because there are touches of the grey coming through from the primer beneath but in this instance here is adding an additional effect to the roof in terms of the tonal colours of the tiles so by making your wash or making your, your painting process more like a wash where you're applying it and then um, you know, doing that little action there to to spread it out and to thin it out again, it's allowing the the greyness of the the, uh, the primer beneath to come through, and it will just add an extra bit of an effect to the roof whenever it's done. If I show you the one on the um, the extension here, it's very hard to pick up in this light, unfortunately, but hopefully you can see there. It's quite dark in around this area but it's a little bit lighter across here and I'm just going to leave that as it is because like I say it just gives an extra effect okay so just thought I'd show you that before I carry on okay so with the enamel paint now dry we're going to apply a coat of black acrylic over the entire roof just be very careful around the chimneys obviously because we don't want to get them dirty and the purpose of this is to get that black into the uh, the grooves of the ridge tiles 
and then what we will do is using a paper towel we will wipe most of this off uh, to leave a sort of streaking effect which will just give an added uh, weathering effect to the tiles you don't go too far ahead on this um, and I'm wiping away in the direction that the rainwater would obviously flow off the tiles you know, don't be right wiping it sort of left to right or um, always sort of run with the way well basically gravity goes and you can remove as much or as little of that as you would wish um, just to uh, depending on the level of uh, dirt and grime that you want on your roof one thing I find myself doing an awful lot whenever I'm out and about is looking at real buildings and looking at the, the roofs of those buildings or the walls, you know, whatever just to get an idea of how the real world works in terms of how things tone down in time how the, how the weather I think it's just good practice to do that particularly if you are doing your own painting um, of your buildings to help try and capture something of what the real world looks like so you can see certainly the different colours that are developing in that now if I turn this round the back and we have this one done and that's already you know what we've done at the front will dry a little bit lighter but th there are nice tonal differences to that and then to finish off we're going to take some white and we're dry brushing it on now if you have never done dry brushing before basically with dry brushing what you're doing is you're putting paint onto your brush and with a paper towel you're removing the majority of it just to leave a residue and then what you can do is with sort of light strokes you can apply sort of I suppose in the case that well I don't know what the, the staining would be on the roof like this but um, it just adds another dimension to your your weathered roof and again you can do that as, um, as heavy or as light as you like but again also what you want to do is to follow the uh, the way rainwater would run off the roof and not only in white but I'm going to use an olive drab and again just using a paper towel I've removed most of it and we'll just add some of that onto it too and just build it up slowly in layers until you're happy enough with the final look of the actual of the actual piece my word can you hear that in the background That is the sound of a lamb egg drum and it's that time of the season now where the orange lodges start practicing for the 12th of July parades. What fun! Okay, so carry on like that until you're happy with your final effect. I'm going to do that now and we'll come back with another little bit in a minute. With the paint applied to the roof we can now turn our attention to the guttering. Now we're going to cheat a little bit in the guttering. Really what we probably should be doing is using um, uh, you know, a, a curved piece of guttering but that is very difficult to fix to the surface. Uh, 
So what we are going to use it is some, um, uh, let me see, let me move that, some U-shaped square rod. Now, I think the dimensions of this is two by one millimeter, but I'm not 100% sure, so I will add it to the description beneath. But because it's got a nice flat edge, it will allow us to glue this to the um, to the front of the roof. And this comes back to why we did that little angle whenever we were initially cutting the card, because it will allow us to apply this. Now I am using an overly long length, as you can see here, because it will allow me to hold it at one end and sort of hold it in place without having to fiddle it in underneath. We're going to use you who to attach this to the surface. So don't be too um, he heavy handed with the, the you who as you apply it to the side because it will go everywhere, as you know. So I've run a bead of glue down one side of the, the channel and I'm just going to try and place it sort of central on that um, in the you know in the middle of the flat edge and we'll try and keep that as straight as possible and the other thing about having that little bit extending out the left because the channel is quite flimsy it will bend so I'm sort of applying a little bit of pressure and pulling it away from my right hand thumb to try and keep it straight now it's not massively important that it, it doesn't sit 100% straight at the end of the day it's an old building so it's probably going to have seen better days but we want to sort of represent it as best as we can now the UHU will take a little bit of time to, to go off so I would just leave that as it is just check your your runoff along the, the, the edge of the, the, the tiles that there's not too many gaps and then just let it be now while you're leaving that be we can look at doing the downspouts I'm not going to run through the process of building the downspouts uh, on this build. On the top right hand corner now there is a link to a video that I did in, on this some time ago and that will show you how I'm going about making these. I will say that it is using one millimetre florist wire and that can be picked up from any garden centre for under a pound. I think I paid about 75p for mine and you get about 12 lengths of it and it will do you you know any, for any numerous number of projects and then once I have that uh, once I have these made I will come back to you and we'll show you fitting them onto the building. Okay so hopefully you should have got your drain pipes sorted and these are mine and they're already primed ready for painting whenever I install them. So the next thing to do, which I didn't show on that video, is to fit them into place. Now for this here, I have trimmed the top, as you can see, and put the, the bend, just using a wee pair of pliers, bend it out so it meets up with the guttering above. And what I'm going to do now is line up here. Actually, I'll turn it that way around there so the wires are pointing away from where we want to do it. Let's see if I can do this one handed. And we'll hold that in place there. And then with a pencil, we'll mark roughly where the line or where the wires protrude out. Like so, move that to the side, and then using one of these little um, uh, pin vise, um, and well, this in this case here, it's a 0.6 mil drill bit. I'm going to now 
drill holes in the building where I've marked those holes. That's one in. and three so with those there in it should just be a matter of feeding the wires and through those holes right, it can get a little bit fiddly here as you try and work them through the wires sometimes don't want to do it what I'll do is I'll go and do this off screen because it's a little bit easier than trying to work it from behind the camera but once we get them through I'll come back to you okay I've got them almost through um, and it's just the last little bit and I'm just sort of wiggling them in the hole is very very tight and purposefully so because I haven't put any glue on these on the outside what I will do is I think that's it now I'll just take a wee bit of pliers here and pull the last little bit through just to make sure it's in probably didn't get to see much of that but I say it is a little bit on the fiddly side okay that's more or less it I can play about with that a little bit but what then I will do is on the inside I am going to press down my wires just against the inside of the building and then with a dab of super glue I'll just put a blob over each one and once that dries in it'll be enough just to hold it in place and once that's in you can take a pair of wire cutters or um, I, wire strippers and just trim off the bottom of the pipe That looks quite nice, doesn't it? And then we'll do a lick of paint on these the same colour as the brickwork and the doors, etc. And the same with the gutters. So I'm going to go away and do that. I've already the back one in. And again, I'll paint these two. And then we'll come back for the next stage. With the guttering painted and the downspouts also, let's turn our attention to the window sills. As you can see here, I've already added one. Now, in the case of the prototype, we only need to add them to the front windows. The, uh, the little window on the extension and the two at the back don't have them. So we've only got the, what, seven to complete. And what we're going to use is the the one mil square rod for that and all we need to do is line it up with our window that we want to use and we're just going to overlap it by the tiniest of margins 
we'll mark it on this side here too. And make a cut. And then with a pair of tweezers, I have a little blob of glue on this piece of plastic. It's the Yuhu we're using for this. And it's quite warm in the roof space tonight and that little blob of glue is drying already. But that should be enough just to put it on. And then we will try and centre this as best we can on the building. I don't think I've enough glue on that. That's better. And with that windowsill, you want to just make sure that it's sitting flush with the um, the bottom edge of your card as whenever we have all these fitted in place we can then put a coat of paint on those the same brick red that we've been using for the other details and we'll paint it right up to the edge for the windowsill but that's it and you know, even just putting those on and in the white form, it already transforms the front of the building. So I'll carry on and I'll fit the other five uh, and I'll also do the coat of paint.